Hey all, this is Derek, and this is going to be the beginning of chapter three. This first section is going to be on uh, transformations, and then the rest of the chapter will be working with absolute values. Um, transformations is a topic that we'll see again when we do roots and quadratics and pretty much everything, rationals. You can do transformations on pretty much any function. Uh, exponentials, logs, we're going to see it a bunch of times. Um, so this is kind of our first run at it, and this time we're just going to use this little line segment and kind of figure out what all this notation means and what it's saying, and then we'll apply that, like I said, to actual functions as we go on. So um, the idea of transformations is that we can be given an original function, which in this case is just this little stick here, and that's being defined as f of x, and then we can do stuff to it. So we could add on to it, we could subtract off of it, we could add or subtract on the inside, and what that can look like um, this whole inside-outside thing, say we had an x squared, if I had x squared plus 3, that would be like this going, something going on on the outside. If I had x plus 3 squared, that's what I mean by inside, and we will see this a bunch as we actually get functions. For right now, I'm just going to kind of say inside and outside. Anytime we're working on the outside, that's going to give us vertical shifts, and for that, the signs make sense, so if we have a plus, it will go up, and if we have a minus, it will go down. When we are working on the um, inside of the function, the horizontal shifts, the signs are backwards what you would expect. Um, a plus is going to go left, and a minus is going to go right. The reason for that, and again, we'll see this several more times, but just for, for the moment, the reason for that, if we think about x squared versus x plus 3 squared, if I put in 0 into x squared, I get 0, right? It'd be right here. What do I have to put in for this x to make it come out to 0 again to make it do the same thing? I have to put negative 3. So as much as we don't like it, that plus 3 is moving that 0 0.3 to the left. So it's what, what's happening is we're having to undo the sign, and that's why it'll be opposite when we're on the inside. So anyhow, more on that to come when we get 3.2. For now, we're just working it out with, like I said, this little um, line segment. Okay, so for this first one, um, again, we're just going to work with this line segment, and we're asked to take, this is our f of x, and then we're asked to add 2 onto it and make a new function. So what that will look like is, if I add plus 2, it used to be when x was 0, y was 0, so now when x is 0, it will be 0 plus 2, or 2. Here it used to be when x was negative 1, um, the output was 2, so now it's going to be 2 plus 2, 4. And, so, and I'm not going to do that on every example, I promise. Um, but you can see what that's doing is if I put a plus 2 on there, it's just going to shift it up 2. So likewise, I don't have to do all that. I can just go, oh, h minus h of x minus 3, it's minus 3 on the outside, so it's going to lower the graph by 3 units. So I just take my 0 and move it down. I take my other point and just 1, 2, 3, move that down, and then draw my new line segment. Okay, for this next one, um, we're supposed to take f of x, which is this, and then uh, do turn it into g of x minus 1. So if I remember back here, a minus 1 is going to shift us right one unit. And so this is going to be right 1. And then for the next step, we'll do um, a plus 3, so that's going to go left 3 when we do that. So right one, I just take this line and again, just move my points right one. And that's why I transformed this one, left three. So one, two, three, and one, two, three. Uh, number three is transform uh, f of x into this. <coughs> and so looking at this, we have, this is gonna be down three because we have the minus three on the outside. And we have a plus 2 on the inside, so that's going to be left 2. And so we can just take each of these points and move them down 3 and left 2. So here we go 1, 2, 3, and down over 1, 2. And here 1, 2, 3, over 1, 2. So that would be my transform function. Okay, this next transformation is the um, definitely the hardest of the uh, things we will look at. So this is graphs with compressions and stretches. So we have two kinds of compressions. Well, okay, they, they come in pairs, basically. 
So we can um, compress and stretch vertically and we can compress and stretch horizontally. So if we were messing around on the outside, that's gonna be a vertical um, stretch of compression. Um, the same way that back when we did up and down here, we messed around on the outside, it raised the graph up and down. When we messed around on the inside of the graph, that moved things left and right. And that's what this is going to do likewise. It's going to be a horizontal stretch of compression. So anytime we're working outside on the function, that's going to kind of mess with the Y values. Anytime we're working inside on the function, um, that's going to mess with the X values. So there's our cat sighting. Okay, so then what's a compression or a stretch? Um, kind of what you would think. A stretch is going to make this thing kind of like stretch out this way if we're going vertically stretching. And a compression is going to be kind of like squish it this way. Um, I think it'll make better sense if I actually do an example. So let me show this vertical stretch and compression with an example. So this is telling me to stretch this by a factor of 2. So normally for my original function f of x here, when I put in 0, it would still be 0, right? And 2 times 0, that would still be 0. But here when I put in 1, normally I would get negative 2 out. But g of x, that, that value evaluated at 1 is now going to be negative 2 times 2, which is going to be negative 4. And so you can see what that's doing is it's taking this original line and then just kind of stretching it out um, along the y-axis. So what this one half will do is the exact opposite. It's going to basically half it. Um, so zero, half of zero is still zero, but now half of two would put this at one. Because when I put in one, it should have been two, but now it's going to get halved by the half in front, and now it's one. So whole numbers in front are going to make things taller and skinnier, and then fractional numbers are going to make them kind of squish. And so again, that was the one we were working in um, on the outside of the function. Next page will be working inside of the function. Okay, so for question five, um, for this one we're doing the horizontal stretch and compression. So it, this is again, anytime we're on the inside, it does the exact opposite of what you would think it would do. Um, by putting a two in here, we're gonna have it compress, and by putting a one half in here, it's actually going to stretch. Um, the reason for that is, if I want this thing to act like g of two, or sorry, f of two, um, when x was two in this, right, g was one. If I put in two, now I'm evaluating two times two, four. I'm, uh, I'm not even in the domain of the function. Um, so for here, if I want this to act like a two, I have to put in a one, right? And so what that's doing is giving me um, a horizontal compression because um, this is doubling everything I put in, so I can only put in half as much. Here, this one half is going to chop everything I put in in half. So I put in zero, half of zero is still zero. Um, but if I put in two, half of two should act like a one now, right? And so now if I put in four, half of four would be two, and then that's going to act like this two. And so then there we can see the horizontal um, stretch. Okay, so then the last of the transformations is reflections. And with reflections, if there is a negative in front, it's going to reflect it about x. And by reflect, think of it as kind of like folding over. And then if there's negative on the inside, it's going to reflect it across y. And so once again, when we mess around on the outside, we're changing the, the y values. It's reflecting about x, but we're changing the y values. And then when we mess around on the inside, we're reflecting about y, but what we're doing is we're changing the x values. So consistent with what we just saw. Um, so here, g negative g of x. So this is our f of x. So negative g of x would be um, this one. So it's just folding it over. So like here, when x was negative 1, it used to be 2. So now it'll be negative 2. It'll be the exact opposite. And then for this one, I wouldn't be able to put in negative 1 because it would act like 1. That wouldn't be in the domain. So again, what this is going to do is reflect it across this way. So now when I put in a positive 1, it acts like it did for negative 1. And that's our reflection across <coughs> uh, the y-axis. Okay, and then these last couple of examples, we'll look at ones that have a couple of different things going and kind of figure out which order to go in terms of doing transformations. 
Um, so we want to do reflections uh, first and then compression or stretches. Um, and then finally we want to do shifts left, last. If you do not do the reflections uh, first, you can get in trouble when you do the left-right shift in terms of your order of operations. Um, so this is definitely the way to go. Um, I also like to do compressions and stretches at the origin just because it's easier on my brain to kind of see how the thing is going to stretch when they become things that are curvy in a few more chapters. So with this one, we're going to have it um, reflect across uh, X because of that negative. And then it's also stretched by a factor of two. So right now, I'm just going to do this much and then I'll, um, I'll move it down one in just a second so we are stretching by a factor of two and we are reflecting so if it was just to reflect it would be right here but then stretched by two instead of being a two it would be a four so there's kind of my my in-between one so i've done the reflection and the compression or the stretch excuse me and then lastly i'll do this shift so now if i do minus one i can just take this one and move everything down one and then that red line is my final. Um, you don't have to draw these in-between ones at all. I'm just doing this to try to help you see what, what I'm doing. Okay, and then for this last one, we are stretching this by a factor of three. And then let's do that much first. So let's just do three times g of x for a second. So that just means my outputs will be three times bigger. So it used to be when I put in negative two, I got out one. Now I'm gonna get three times that much or three. Um, and then if I put in zero, I used to get out zero, and zero times three is still zero, so that one's not too interesting. But so it should just look like that. And now that we have that, let's go ahead and move that one. We're going to go right four and up one. Um, so for the minus four on the inside, plus one on the outside. So we'll just take this one and move everything right four and up one, and then right four and up one. And there we go.